This is Valley News Live at noon. We begin with breaking news. One man is now in custody following a crash that led to an armed robbery. It happened this morning just after one when Fargo officers were sent to 17th Avenue South and 45th Street South for a crash. Now, during the investigation, officers received reports of gunshots on East Gateway Circle South and reports of vehicle being taken during an armed robbery. Officers later learned all three of these incidents are related. One man is in police custody at a local hospital. Well, one of the men charged in a North Fargo murder case has now pled guilty. 21-year-old Ring Arong was allegedly selling meth on May 12th of 2020 when several gunshots were fired near the Northport Hornbachers, killing 39-year-old Antoine Lamont White of Fargo. Court records show all the charges against him, except murder, were dismissed. Court documents say Ayong has been sentenced to 15 years in prison with five years of supervised probation. He'll get credit for the 293 days he spent already behind bars. The 16-year-old driver involved in a single car crash in Grand Forks last Wednesday has passed away. Grand Forks police identified the teen as Mason Barry. Authorities say Barry succumbed to his injuries from the crash over the weekend. The crash is still under investigation. Anyone with information about the crash is asked to contact Grand Forks Police at the number on your screen. Well, what a chilly way to start the day, and I was literally eating my first ever Dilly Bar while being pretty chilly this morning. And let's check in with forecaster Summer Snowbox. As I was telling you, Summer, it was my first time trying it in this cold weather. That is very exciting. Dilly Bars are delicious. And of course, the Moorhead... We're going to come back to weather shortly so you'll be able to get a full report. Thanks again, Summer. Well, Wadena County Sheriff's deputy who was shot during a struggle with a driver over the weekends is back home recovering. He is one of the four people shot Saturday night near Sabika, Minnesota. Two suspects were killed and a police officer was shot in his protective vest but did not require treatment. The State Bureau of Criminal Apprehension says it all started with a traffic stop around 9 at night Saturday. There was a fight between the deputy and the driver and continued after a second driver and a Sabika police officer showed up. The BCA says at least one of the motorists started shooting at the officers and one of the officers returned fire. They say the names of the suspects will be released after their autopsies and police have not yet released the names of the deputy and officer involved either. Preparations start today in Minneapolis ahead of the trial of a former police officer charged with killing George Floyd. Derek Chauvin's trial is scheduled to start with jury selection next Monday. This morning, the Minneapolis City Council is scheduled to be briefed about the city's plans and preparations related to the trial. Then the Minnesota Court of Appeals will hear from prosecutors requesting to reinstate a third degree murder charge against Chauvin, which was dismissed last October. Chauvin is charged with second degree murder and manslaughter in Floyd's death. A major operation is underway today in the fight against COVID-19. The Johnson & Johnson's vaccine received approval for emergency use over the weekend, and workers at a facility in Kentucky are loading trucks to get the new vaccine to distribution points. Now, new York City is one of the locations for a mass distribution center. NBC's Stephanie Gosk reports from Manhattan. With a third COVID vaccine now approved for emergency use, there is new hope that the effort to vaccinate America will speed up. Johnson & Johnson set to deliver 4 million doses of its vaccine this week. The FDA's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, or ACIP, recommending the vaccine for people 18 and older. 
example, you would now have three highly efficacious vaccines. If you go to a place and you have J&J and that's the one that's available now, I would take it. I personally would do the same thing. I think people need to get vaccinated as quickly and as expeditiously as possible. In clinical trials, J&J's vaccine demonstrated a 72% efficacy in the United States and was 100% effective at preventing COVID-related deaths. The vaccine can also be stored at regular refrigeration levels and requires just one dose. Johnson & Johnson is going to be a game changer. The fact that we can fully vaccinate everyone in just one shot it's just going to get us to the finish line that much faster. Still, for now, getting shots into arms hasn't been a smooth process. In Washington, D.C., the mayor and health officials say technical issues with their vendor caused their site to crash as people tried to sign up for appointments. While California, which has faced delays and issues with distribution of its vaccines, is set to roll out a new statewide network today run by Blue Shield. And as more states lift restrictions, health experts warn that even though daily cases and deaths are declining, they still remain too high. Now is not the time to relax restrictions. Johnson & Johnson says 4 million doses will be out by the end of this week, but officials caution that the supply of this single dose vaccine could be spotty this month, even though the company says there'll be 20 million doses out the door by the end of March. Johnson & Johnson also says it will begin trials on children under the age of 18 and pregnant women. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, New York. The coronavirus vaccine is set to trigger the fastest retail sales growth in over two decades. Well, according to the National Retail Federation, retail sales are expected to grow this year by between 6.5% and 8.2%. That accounts to more than $4.33 trillion in sales. Experts are crediting the expected boost to the economy reopening and more and more individuals receiving the COVID vaccine. West Fargo school leaders are issuing a status report of sorts later today. Their state of their schools address is from 7 to 8.30 tonight. You can watch it on the school's district's YouTube channel. Well, this Saturday, the Bison traveled to Springfield, Missouri to take on Missouri State for their third game of the spring season. The pregame show starts at 1 and kickoff is set for 2. You can catch all the action on KVLY. Well, coming up at noon, the vaccine struggle continues for parents and of children with pre-existing medical conditions. And what a chilly way to start the first day of March. Weather up next to plan your day with forecaster Summer Snowbox.